as well as some of our um, media personnel who are here. Thank you for joining us this morning. It is really a pleasure to have you here with us at the Montserrat National Trust as we embark on this journey of another very important undertaking, one which aligns well with our thrust to conserve, preserve, and protect our natural and cultural heritage. The project we are embarking on today came from the concept of our people, like you, asking us tons of questions as we spoke about other projects that we were implementing at the time. So this project titled Delivering Biodiversity and Human Wellbeing Gains for Montserrat's Sustainable Development has been ably been put to life through the funding of Darwin Plus. So you'll be hearing me in the future speaking of D plus 192 and now learning all the code numbers for the projects that we are handling. And this is one. So from the journey of the Adopt a Home for Wildlife project, which focuses on making room for wildlife on and around our, our premises, to capturing the history of healing plants and how they have added years to our lives over generations. These which we have captured in the publication of the booklet, 15 Popular Medicinal Plants on Montserrat, funded by the Hidden History Project. We now have a flavor through these two projects on how we can preserve our plant heritage and our insect fauna from our introduction to herbarium and undertaking plant and invertebrate surveys. We have had the opportunity to do this though with a number of cadets and over the two years we have about seven cadets who have benefited working on these projects and um, really had the opportunity to build their skills. We also had the opportunity for adopters who are members of our public who volunteer to be part of these projects to help us again in the thrust of protecting Montserrat's unique biodiversity. And significantly was the launch of the Monty Messengers where we had 70 young persons of primary school age registered as part of the Monty's Messengers program. And this project now allows us to align to our strategic objectives of strengthening youth engagement and community involvement in the mandate of the Montserrat National Trust. The project opens great opportunities with a heavy focus on youth engagement and community and building on the gains of the previous projects which I've mentioned. It will allow for a reference point for access of information for developers and to inform decision making as we choose areas in which we'll want to develop but ensuring that we include things like green spaces and patches where we have, we can benefit from things like our, our medicinal plants, which was also part of our history here in Montserrat, where every home had a tea bush patch. In this project, we will also include biodiversity badges of international significance, such as the Yunga, which is the Youth UN Global Alliance badges, which we will share the experiences of biodiversity across all youth organizations, not those specific to the Montserrat National Trust. And at the end of the three years, we would have cemented tangible sources for contributing to Montserrat's sustainability through the balance of flora and fauna in our island's development and the records of our natural history, which we can continue to build on. The design of this toolkit will require all of our inputs. And so it is not one that is just tailor, a plaster, it's not, it's not a plaster. And you will see when Catherine um, present to you how you can get involved in shaping what the biodiversity toolkit can look like for Montserrat. You will also find out more about the other areas of the project as Catherine makes her presentation. Thank you.
for embarking on this journey with us. I would like to present to you at this time the director of the UK Overseas Territories Conservation Forum, Mrs. Catherine Wensing. Thank you, Donald. And with protocol as established, I'll, ju I'll just uh, kick off. So all projects have to start somewhere, a spark, an idea, and this project has been built up around one idea, which is how can Montserrat develop sustainably while protecting what is dear to it and for the good of its people. A team, all with certain expertise, has been brought together on Montserrat by the Montserrat National Trust. And you can see some of these here. So the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology, Mays Botanic Gardens, the Species Recovery Trust and Leeds Museum and Galleries, all with the um, Ministry for Agriculture, Land Housing and, and Development and, and Environment, sorry, and with the Trust and, and the Overseas Territories Conservation Forum. So over the next few years, we'll hear a lot about the toolkit. Today, we're here to give a flavor of this work so that you have some idea of what is being discussed when you hear about the biodiversity and human well-being toolkit or just the toolkit. We will give you a sense of the number of partners involved and what they will do. The project will stretch as far as it can in terms of involving people across the island from the start. And this is why we welcome you all here today. There are several strands of the project, each with sub-teams part of a wider team assembled this is done because the technical knowledge needed on some aspects comes from a wide range of organizations. We've never wanted to repeat or redo what others have done. We are mindful that work may have been explored in the lifetime of various endeavors that have gone before, but we acknowledge and build on this work. For example, Mays Botanic Gardens have spoken with Royal Botanic Gardens of Kew, who did a lot of work here with the Trust previously. All this coming together um, to form a team feels a bit like an Avengers movie right now, but we'll, uh, we'll carry on. So the second part of the project, so the project has five elements. The second part is that um, the Montserrat National Trust will lead on all aspects um, supported by several others. And the first is the biodiversity wellbeing toolkit. And then the second is the Montserrat National Trust youth and education program. The third is building on biological collections and collecting further information because Montserrat is, is really quite special in terms of the species that you have and there are still so many more to be discovered. The fourth is development, uh, further development of the Botanic Garden. And the fifth is communications and reporting because those are all, all the key to the success of the project. So the need for the toolkit came from people contacting the trust who were asking for information, advice on a variety of issues relating to the natural environment. The trust has long been a, been a valuable source of information. With limited resources, the trust can do this, but hope for a place that could provide this information for all to access. With all the community, or as much as possible, involved in its creation from the outset, it hopes to, to leave nobody behind. This very much includes groups who may have felt their voices often go unheard or undervalued. The project wants to hear from you. If you think you have something to say which would have a positive impact on Montserrat's biodiversity and or the well-being of its people. So the development of the framework toolkit enabling biodiversity and well-being to be integrated into physical development and land management We'll start with a series of consultations and bring together this information. It will use different techniques to do this. 
Partners will carry out consultations, focus groups, and to prove it works, it will be trialed on some areas of land to measure the benefits to biodiversity and human well-being. As Jodie will explain later, the toolkit does not come from thin air. We've, we are building on something. The second element is the Young Person Program. Montserrat young persons wish to be involved in the Montserrat National Trust work after they graduated from Mon Monty's Messengers and we're looking for activities to get involved in. Partners will expand m ts youth program and education materials, further support for Monty's Messengers, junior program and senior program, organizations, the organization of an annual higher education evening to give you a flavor of, of what possibly possibilities you could have in, in um, natural sciences. We will explore the young UN Global Alliance badges which align with the Sustainable Development Goals which will give young persons something tangible to aim for in terms of ad accreditation or certification. The team will continue to develop Montserrat's biological collections and information including the establishment of an on-island herbarium data systems and management, citizen science opportunities created and nurtured, for example, more bioblitz and, and uh, natural history collections. Partners will, build, will help build these collections, publish material and interpretation will be developed on biodiversity and well-being. Botanic garden development, there will be some expansion of the botanic garden to fil facilitate uptake of the toolkit and provide sources of information, demonstration and provision of native plants. And finally, consultation and public events and campaigns, continuous dialogue with the community through outreach including social media channels. This aspect will be continuous via a variety of sources, the radio, social media, online, and wherever you see MNT staff, you can always ask them about it. I'm sure they will be delighted. So thank you for attention, and I'm going to play a, sh a short video from Jody from the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology, and she speaks very quickly, so it will be a very quick video. Thank you very much to uh, the Monster National Trust and the Ecosystem Territories Conservation Forum for this opportunity to speak today. My name is Jodie and I'm an ecologist um, and I um, would like to talk to you today about this uh, part of the pro this new project that I will be working on um, with, with the fantastic colleagues from the team. Um, this uh, part of the project is about developing a, a toolkit uh, for biodiversity and well-being on Montserrat um, and I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about how this project came about in terms of um, the work we've done together previously. Um, so in 2021, uh, the, late in the year, we were lucky enough to be awarded a Arts and Humanities Research Council and a Natural Environment Research Council project um, on looking at the colonial histories um, from the Ecosystem Territories and the project was called From Blue Iguanas to Blue Vervain um, and yeah it was a 15 month project with some fantastic partners at the um, uh, National Trust of the Cayman Islands, the Montreal National Trust, Mizer Botanic Gardens, uh, Leeds Museums and Galleries, the Ecosystem Territories Conservation Forum and it was led um, by us at the uh, UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology where I used to work. Um, this was a sort of 15 month project and it was a fantastic collaboration um, looking at various aspects of uh, the impacts of colonialism, whether it's from the, the past or the, sort of the current impacts, um, some of these around the use of medicinal plants and the fantastic um, endemic uh, blue iguana on the Cayman Islands. Um, we're looking at the records and recorders, um, looking at invasive non-native species, um, looking at interactions between green iguana and blue iguana. Um, we had a fantastic project. We developed a, a framework of best practice for working uh, with the Eucalyptus territories. It was a wonderful project. We were very, very lucky to have a fantastic team um, and this sort of fantastic working collaboration that we had inspired us to apply for, for, for further funding. And again, we we're incredibly lucky to, to get this Darwin project. And um, yeah, we basically thought this is an opportunity for us to take forward um, some of the ideas and the things that came from that first project and we wanted to and build on them and, and expand to see um, how we can help um, biodiversity and, and well-being on, on Montserrat. 
so what we wanted to do was um, to work with um, the fantastic team on Montserrat uh, to develop a toolkit to support biodiversity and well-being on, on Montserrat. And what we did was we based this on a, a previous project, um, Braces Toolkit idea on a previous project, uh, which was again funded by the Natural Environment Research Council um, and was run by the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology uh, with partners at Southern Housing Group and others. Um, and we created this fantastic toolkit, um, a really lovely uh, booklet basically helping, this was designed to help um, housing providers support biodiversity and wellbeing on housing provider sites, so sites that where multiple residents will be living and don't necessarily have great access to biodiversity and the kind of the benefits that that can bring. Um, so what we wanted to do was to uh, create a resource that was easy to digest, easy to manage, um, and that would signpost um, housing providers uh, and the people who manage their estates to simple op options they can do to help wildlife on their sites and, and also promote engagement with those with those wildlife on the sites such as through citizen science initiatives um, and what we're hoping to do is through this project we want to um, take this take a, a, a toolkit model and develop something um, based on the experiences and the ideas and suggestions from the fantastic community on Montserrat take those and, and create a Montserrat specific uh, toolkit where we can help um, you know get help getting people involved in the fantastic wildlife that's there and also protect it and and yeah to basically support um people and wildlife on Montserrat. So uh, we have three years to complete this project as you can see the toolkit is just one of the many fantastic outputs that we're that we're going to be doing in this project um, and what we're going to use this time for is to have um, work with Montserrat National Trust to um, have consultations on really gathers like feedback and suggestions for ways in which you feel that and the community of Montserrat feels that we can um, make a really inclusive useful talk that can help uh, support well-being and also support the fantastic biodiversity of Montserrat and I'm really really looking forward to working with you all and yeah fantastic and I can't wait to see you hopefully very soon have a great rest of your meeting thank you very much Sorry about the sound there, but I think you got the gist. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine and Judy. Um, we apologize for the quality of the sound in that um, video presentation. But just to underscore that um, this project is really focused on young people and getting them involved in all aspects of management of Montserrat's biodiversity. And one example of which I want to highlight today is that two years ago, we interviewed a young lady for some work alongside um, the Mountain Chicken Program, which was led by um, two gentlemen from the UK and today I'm proud to report that this young person who came into the trust into the mountain chicken program is now leading the local initiative so the programs that we're doing especially with our youth involvement is important so I want to point out and congratulate Casey Ryan who's now <laughs> leading the local mountain chicken program and that is what we're aiming to do, is to involve in all these projects and activities, involving the Montserrat young people so that in time, and this was just two years, they can assume leadership roles in managing the environment. So thank you for your support, all the agencies who have been working with us. Um, thank you for your support. Um, the Honorable Minister, of the environment has apologized for his absence, has asked me to apologize for his absence. He has another engagement, but he's ably represented by his PS here, and I'm sure she'll take back all the information. Because the work we do, we do not do it in isolation, we do it alongside the Ministry of Environment. Um, it's not an adversarial relationship, but it's a very close relationship. We work across all of the areas of the environment with the Ministry. And from the ministry, we have another important um, head, the head of the physical planning unit, because this project is also going to be involving 
um, planners, um, architects, um, landscapers, and so on. So the ministry is important in terms of seeing what plans are being proposed and getting advice to the developers on ways in which they can conserve Montserrat's rich biodiversity. So it gives me good, great pleasure right now to call on Mr. Jerome Mead to speak to us at this time. Good morning, one and all. It gives me great pleasure to speak at this forum this morning, the protocol having been established. I would like to preface by saying that the Montreal National Trust has played a very important role in the preservation of the cultural biodiversity, historic fabric and heritage of our island and still continues to this day. The regional and UK partners also have played a significant role and contribution to the MNT as well, in terms of knowledge sharing, capacity building, and so on, to advance the work of the organization. I've had the distinct pleasure of collaborating with the Trust on a number of important projects to include the wetland at the Old Roads Bay, considering that the main wetland was destroyed as a result of volcanic activities at Fox's Bay. There are also a number of important projects that are dear to me also, in terms of the preservation of the mountain chicken that has been impacted by the chytrid fungus. And also, there are some innovative ways that the trusts have brought apps to us to be able to use on our smartphone, like the iNaturalist app, that would help codify and make it easier in identifying both flora and fauna on the island. The project led by the Montreal National Trust on the island aims to deliver biodiversity and human well-being gains for Montreal's sustainable development. Out of this project, a biodiversity and well-being toolkit will be delivered to help practitioners and decision makers to make more informed decisions. At its core, the project involves the development of a comprehensive framework, toolkit that facilitates the integration of biodiversity and well-being. Considerations into physical development planning processes as well. This Toolkit will serve as a valuable resource for individuals, children, as represented here, and organizations involved in shaping Montreal's development landscape. One of the key components of the project is extensive consultations with relevant stakeholders by engaging a wide range of perspectives, including local communities, government agencies, and environmental experts. The project ensures that the toolkit reflects the diverse needs and aspirations of Montreal's population. Furthermore, the toolkit will undergo a series of trials to measure its effectiveness in delivering tangible benefits for both biodiversity conservation and human well-being. These trials will help build valuable insights into the toolkit's practical application and enable necessary refinements to maximize its impact. A significant outcome of the project will be the publication of the toolkit online, as you say, making it very accessible. All of us have our smartphones these days, and it's so easy to use this technology. So the ability to put it online is very, very, very useful. The publication will also serve as a comprehensive guide, offering practical strategies and tools and methodologies for integrating the biodiversity and well-being consideration into physical development projects on Montreal. By making this resource widely accessible, the project aims to promote sustainable development practices that enhance biodiversity conservation and improve the well-being of the island's inhabitants. Overall, the Biodiversity and Well-Being Toolkit project led by the Montreal National Trust represents a crucial step towards achieving sustainable development goals on island. Through in 
inclusive consultations, rigorous trials, and publication of the practical toolkit, the project seeks to enable Monstrat to harmonize physical development with the preservation of biodiversity and the well-being of its people. In closing, I would say volunteerism is an important element to advance the work of the Trust. I feel that I've been working with the Trust for almost a lifetime as a young person. As I get older, I'm still collaborating with them. And um, the, the inputs of persons are very important to continue their work. They cannot do it alone. And therefore, they are seeking volunteers also from the wider public to assist where possible, even on the weekends, to assist the Trust in the endeavors for the preservation of the country's natural resources. In closing, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mead, and we have one of our famous volunteers here along with us this morning, is Your Excellency. Um, she's one of our Monty Messengers volunteers helping us. So thank you, Mr. Mead, for that plug about us getting volunteers. Um, as I said before, we are trying across the board to involve our young people. Um, we were fortunate to put in and being successful with the funding for our conservation officer, and I want to introduce to you our conservation officer who's been here for two months, Mr. Chris Silis is <laughs> here, and the, he, the, his position is funded by John Elliman Foundation, and we were so happy to be able to get a project approved and funded by John Elliman Foundation. Alongside Chris, we've just recruited another young person from Montserrat who's, gonna, who's now the junior conservation officer. And I'll call on Kadeen KB, our newest member of, of staff, to speak to us at this time. Good morning, everyone. I would like to adopt the protocol that has already been established. Um, before I begin, I would like to give um, background about myself. I have a Bachelor of Science in Microbiology from the University of the West Indies, Cape Hill campus, and have a Master of Science in Integrative Medicine Research from the National University of Natural Medicine, Portland, Oregon, USA. Um, this master's degree prepares persons to do research in natural medicine or alternative medicine. After completing my master's, I worked with a research group at Oregon Health and Science University, where they were doing research on two plants, ashwagandha and centella asiatica for brain health and cognition. Towards the end of my time with this research group, I learned about the Hidden Histories Project here at the National Trust, where they're trying to record the, the medicinal plants on Monster that have been traditionally used. I thought it was a fantastic project. There are some traditional medicine modalities like Ayurvedic medicine in India, Chinese medicine, that have their, their medicinal plants recorded in a book. But we didn't have that, so it's easy to lose it. So I was very excited about possibly being able a part of this project. So I reached out to the National Trust, and they agreed that I would be a useful member of the team. And I'm here today as the conservation, junior conservation officer. I want to thank everyone once again for being here today for the launch of our new project here at the Montserrat National Trust titled Delivering Biodiversity and Human Well-Being Gains for Montserrat Sustainable Development, referred to more simply as the Biodiversity and Well-Being Toolkit. This project aims to enable the integration of biodiversity and well-being into both physical and community development. This project will involve numerous stakeholders, the most important of which are arguably the youth, in the form of the youth cadets, Monty messengers, and Monty ambassadors. It is important for youth to be involved in projects like these to ensure sustainability, give youth a voice in conservation, to bring fresh ideas, and to encourage involvement of other youth. Firstly, let us now consider the reason why it is important for you to be involved in conservation to guarantee sustainability. Sustainability is defined as the long-term viability of a community, set of social institutions, or a societal practice. 
the older ones in the population are well aware of the importance of conservation and take action in this regard. However, the task of conservation is an ongoing process, not an event. Work will still need to be done in the future. However, the community members who started the conservation efforts will not be able to carry on in the future as they are mortal and will not be around forever. It is important, therefore, to always involve the younger generation in conservation to ensure that it continues for generations to come. Secondly, it is also important to involve the youth in conservation projects like this to give them the opportunity to voice and act on their conservation concerns. There are many of us who assume that the youth are not knowledgeable or concerned about the environment or conservation, but this may not be the case. Through formal education, community outreach programs, or social media, young people come to know the issues affecting the environment and the importance of conservation. This knowledge compels some of them to want to take action, but they may be unsure of how to make a contribution. By reaching out to the youth directly, we can ensure that they do make a contribution. Another reason to involve the youth is to bring new life to conservation projects. That is, youth will always have fresh ideas and are more likely to be innovative and implement new ideas and concepts to tackle old problems. They will observe and view things from their perspective, especially how it will impact their lives going forward. Consequently, with their involvement throughout and the sharing of their viewpoint on all aspects of conservation, this will positively impact the going concern of the project. Youth are also better positioned to motivate their peers. When you will see someone of their age creating conservation ideas, they may become motivated or inspired to get involved and create ideas of their own. Furthermore, Young people tend to be fueled by the energy of their contemporaries and will join forces when they feel that they are making a difference in the society in which they choose to live. In conclusion, we must never lose sight of the fact that our youth are very important stakeholders in our conservation efforts, since without them, all the initiatives taken to protect our environment and biodiversity will retrogress. As highlighted earlier, Continuation and sustainability are wholly de dependent on youth involvement. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Kadeen. Well said. Yes. Um, we have another young person who has been with the trust for a couple of years. But she has been leading in a number of areas. She is a museum um, assistant, and but recently she has a desire to work in the nursery and along with the um, development of our herbarium. So I want to call on Ms. Jodi Tai to give vote of thanks. She is a conservation technician now, so we call on her. She worked on the. Hidden Histories Project, when we did the interviews with the older persons in the community, she led that project of the interviews. So, Jodi, please come and do the vote of thanks for us. I'm a little short, so. Good morning um, and welcome to all present and joining us online to the launch of D plus 192. I would like to start by recognizing the protocol established. Thank you for joining us this morning. I would like to recognize Catherine Wenzik, Victoria Wilkins, Miss Rachel and Dr. Mike Piankowski. Sorry if I butchered that. <laughs> who are with us here today on Ireland to see how we've progressed. To our partners, Leeds Museums and Galleries, Mays Botanical Garden, Darwin Plus, the UK Center for Ecology and Hydrology, 
UK Overseas Territories Conservation Forum, the Species Recovery Trust, and the Ministry of Agriculture, Housing, Lands, and Environment. Thank you for your assistance and support with the D Plus 192 project. We at the Montserrat National Trust truly believe that your involvement will help us in discovering the extent of and preserving Montserrat's biodiversity in this project. I am grateful to be a part of this and look forward to learning whatever I possibly can along the way, as I did in the Hidden Histories project. Thank you very much. Well, just to say God bless you all, I forgot the prayer at the beginning, but um, thank you so much everybody for coming, ZGB and also um, Philo Magic Media and all the staff um, for the trust who helped with the preparations for this function. I don't want to start calling names, I'm going to forget somebody. So all the staff of the trust and also to let you know that there are refreshments just outside. Um, we have refreshments outside as you leave. Thank you so much, um, members of the trust executive and all the other persons. And of course, Victoria and Rachel, thank you for joining us this morning. It's an honor to have you with us this morning. Thank you, everybody.